So today we're talking about comparing and ordering whole numbers and decimals. And when we're comparing and ordering whole numbers and decimals, there's a few things that we have to think about. First of all, it makes it so much easier when we have an organized way to look at our numbers. When they're side by side, of course it can be done, but a more organized way would be to use a place value chart. And so today when we organize, we will do use a place value chart and that is going to be a PVC. So you'll hear me refer to the place value chart as a PVC. Um, so let's put these orders, these numbers in order from greatest to least. We'll put these numbers in order from greatest to least. Okay, which means we're gonna start with the largest number and go to the lowest number. And let's see, with my place value chart, which is my tool to use to organize my data, I'm going to start with the tens place. Notice, now I know that place value charts can go, you know, past the billions and trillions and on, but because our numbers just have two different place values, they have ones and tens, we're just going to start with tens and ones, okay? Your decimal point always says and, so when you say a number with a decimal point, you're always going to use, say the word and. For example, this is 23 and three hundredths. Remember those decimal numbers have, you say, the TH at the end of them? So tenth, hundredth, and thousandth. Okay, that's our place value chart. Because that's all we're going to go to at this, at this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put my information, put my data inside of the place value chart. So let's start with the 23 and three hundredths and then 23 and 32 hundredths 23 and 32 thousandths 23 and 35 hundredths I'm going to extend my table a bit to make sure that all my numbers fit and then 23 and 3 tenths. Make sure I scoot that up for you. Okay, so we have our numbers in the place value chart now. When you're writing numbers, make sure that you um, you kind of check them off. So 23 and 3 hundredths, put a little check there. 23 and 32 hundredths, 23 and 32 thousandths, 23 and 35 hundredths, 23 and 3 tenths. Okay, so we have all the numbers um, that we need from our data, and we're now going to put them in order from least to greatest. But I want you to notice here that although all the first numbers, the, one, the numbers in the tens and the numbers in the ones ca um, category in the, that column, those numbers are the same. So because those numbers are the same, we can kind of eliminate them. We can just not even look at them. So I'm going to use a pencil. I'm just going to mark through because they're all twos. I'm marking through those because I'm not even looking at those right now. Okay, I just did it with a pencil. You don't have to scratch through them. You still want to see the number, but we're not going to use those currently. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is that some of my digits, some of my numbers end in the hundredths, one of them ends in the thousands, and one of them ends in the tenths. When you're using a place value chart, um, you, you want to, although it's used as a tool to organize data, it also allows you to do a really quick um, way to do, um, to make them all the same. And a really quick way to make all the numbers look the same is to add a zero. So you basically stacked your numbers up and you're going to fill in the gaps with zero. If one number ends in the thousandth place, they all need to end in the thousandth place. It's like doing a, um, an equivalent fraction table, almost like finding a common denominator for your decimals the same way you would fractions. And we know that fractions and decimals are the same. Both of them are parts of wholes. So we did not change the value of these numbers because we didn't add anything in the thousands place that would change the value. Previously, this number had zero tenths, three hundredths, and zero thousands, and it still has zero tenths, three hundredths and zero thousands. So that did not change the value. We made more pieces. So we took that, whatever this whole was, 
and we just cut it into more pieces okay all right so now we can look at our numbers because we can compare them we can compare them all based on they're all the same size pieces now and it's easier to compare things when they're the same size all right so we're going from greatest to least from greatest to least the largest number well I can't I can tell it's not going to be one of these because they've got a zero so it's got to be one of the ones with three okay and then next here I have oh I have 350 looks like 350 so I'm gonna say that's my largest number and the next one in the series to be uh, to come would be 320 I'm gonna put a 2 there and now I'm at 30 32 and 300 I'm gonna say 300 would be number 3 and then fourth would be the 32 and then fifth would be the one with three okay and what we've done is we've put them in order from least to greatest giving the largest number the number one and the smallest number has number five okay and when you you still have the 23 in front as the whole numbers you still have that part but in order to kind of compare them we didn't even need to look at these because those were the same digits the same digits in the twos the same digits in the ones and so we didn't have to use those numbers um, but when if you were, if you're putting these numbers writing them down again and you would write this first one is 23 and 35 hundredths you don't have to put the zero you can and it doesn't mean that it's wrong but sometimes you won't see the answer um, with the zero on there so you just need to understand that even though the zero is covered here the zero is not there and the zero is there now this is still the same value 35 hundredths is the same as 350 thousandths the only thing that changed was this is a multiple um, of 10 here it's just the pieces have been multiplied there are more pieces okay all right so that would be number one 23 and 32 hundredths would be number two then number three would be 23 and 3 tenths and 23 and 32 thousandths is number four and 23 I'll put it down here 23 and oops that should be a decimal point and three hundredths is the final one okay so when you're comparing decimals comparing and ordering whole numbers and decimals you want to use something that will help you to organize your data and that something in this case is a place value chart so that's your tool for this kind I'll show you another way that we can organize data um, a way of looking at numbers so I have a worksheet here I'm gonna put this in so on this particular one this particular worksheet what we have is we already have these in, this information the chart below shows the results of 50 yard freestyle race for four students these are the students and these are their times which of the following statements is true okay so this is another way to handle um, comparing numbers okay I don't know that I would put these in a place value chart I don't think that I have to at this point because I'm really just comparing two numbers at a time although there are three numbers here you never want to compare more than two numbers at a time okay so I'm gonna basically cover this I'm looking at 23 and 91 thousandths and 23 okay 23 and 91 thousandths is greater than 23 well I know that this is 23 and some change 23 and a little bit more so 23 and a little bit more is that better than or bigger than 23 it is that's true so I'm going to put a check over this because that's a true statement you can put a check or T for true now here I have 23 I'm comparing my next two numbers 23 is greater than 24 well would you rather have 23 dollars in your pocket or would you rather have 24 in your pocket I would rather have 24 so this statement is not true 23 is not greater than 24 okay let's look at B B says 23 so I'm sorry 24 and 3 tenths is greater than 23 alright I'm only looking at two numbers at a time so I'm covering that 
24 and 3 tenths is greater than 23. Well, that's true. So I'm going to put a check over this. All right. Then we have 23 is less than. Remember when it, the, the sign is, when you're reading left to right, if the opening is towards the number, then it's greater than. If it's kind of pointing at it, the opening is away from that first number, then it's less than. So 23 is less than 23 and 91 thousandths. 23 is less than 23 and some change. Yeah, that's true. It is less than. Okay. All right. C says 23 and 5 hundredths. I'm saying the wrong number here. 24 and 5 hundredths is greater than 24 and 3 tenths. Well, look at this number. This particular number has two place values after the decimal point, and this number has one place value after the decimal point. Because those first two numbers are the same, we're going to disregard those. We're not even going to look at that 24 because the 24s are equal. They're equivalent. They're the same. But here, again, we're like that first um, thing that we did when we added the zeros, we're going to add a zero here. Just add it in there. All right? You've got enough space in there. So now you have 5 and 30. 5 hundredths and 30 hundredths. So which is bigger? 30 hundredths. So is 5 hundredths greater than 30 hundredths? No. So that can't be your answer. You don't even have to check the other part because this part is wrong. Okay? Let's look at D. D says 24 and 3 tenths is less than 24 and 5 hundredths. Well, we just did the same thing over here. The 24s are the same, so we're going to disregard the 24s for just a minute. And I'm going to add a zero behind the 3 in order to compare the 30 hundredths and the 5 hundredths. Well, 30 is not less than 5, so this part is wrong. That's inaccurate. So our answer would be B. Okay? Really simple. You guys can do that. All right, our final one is a way to look at um, fractions and decimals, comparing fractions and decimals. Well, we know that fractions and decimals can be equivalent. Um, we know that fractions and decimals can be equivalent, so we're going to show exactly how we know that, okay? You have a list of, of on your number lines, of equivalent fractions and decimals. And so when we did this, we kind of labeled them, okay? So this is one of your tools that you can use right now until you remember some of them. These are called benchmark fractions. These are fractions that you'll just, you'll come in contact with all the time. And so it's a good thing to learn those fractions, what the decimal is, okay? Um, but the other thing I want to talk to you about is we are noticing that there's a decimal and that's a fraction. So please make sure that if there's a decimal and a fraction, you want them to look the same. We can't put zeros behind them right now because that's a fraction. But if we make them both the same thing, you either want to make them both fractions or both decimals. I think the easier way would be to make them both decimals because then you can just compare them. If you make them fractions, then you have to turn this one into a fraction and then you have to come up with a common denominator. So we're going to skip one of those steps and we're going to say, we're going to rewrite our problem. Five tenths is greater than one fourth as a decimal. When we talked about one fourth as a decimal. It's like having four quarters and a dollar. One of those would be 25 cents. So we're going to put 25 hundredths. Remember, one has two digits. It's in the hundreds place, so this one also needs to be in the hundreds place. All right, 50 hundreds is greater than 25 hundreds. That's true. So this is a true statement. Forgot to tell you, we were looking for is not true, so we're looking for something that's false in this one. All right, and I think there's two answers in this question. Here, same thing. Ooh, one half is equivalent to five tenths. Let me fix that. Miss McQueen just made a mistake there. I was just writing something. I was writing the correct way to show this instead of writing what's here. So make sure you copy exactly what's on the problem. All right, so that's going to be less than 25 hundredths. Again, this has two digits. This needs to have two digits. So this one's saying 50 is less than 25 hundredths. 50 hundredths is less than 25 hundredths. That's false. 
because this is the opposite of that. So of course it's false because we already showed that this part was true. The opposite cannot be true also. All right, now let's look at this one. We have 75 hundredths equals to 3 fourths. Well here, on our chart, 3 fourths is like 75 cent. So that's 75 hundredths. 3 fourths equals 3 fourths. That's true. Okay, look at your next one. I'm going to go with 2 tenths is greater than 1 fourth we said is 25 hundredths. So I'm going to put my decimal point and then 25. This has two places after the decimal point. So your other one has to have two place values after the decimal point. Okay, 20 hundredths is greater than 25 hundredths. Not at all. Not at all. So we're going to say that that is false. 25 is larger, so 25 should be should have the opening towards it, okay? So your answers in this case would be B and D. So whenever you have fractions and decimals and you're comparing them, you want to make sure that they are either both fractions or they're both decimals, okay, in order to compare them. You want to do like and like. Both of them need to look the same. So your, your options when you're comparing um, whole numbers and fractions or whole numbers with other whole numbers um, with decimals in them, please use a place value chart that helps you to organize your information. If you're just comparing maybe two numbers to each other, it's perfectly okay to do what we did here and to add the zero at the end um, if they don't necessarily um, have the same number of digits. Also, if you're comparing fractions to decimals or decimals to fractions, you want to make sure that you are comparing like to like. You're comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges, which would mean the decimal to another decimal, okay? Thank you so much, um, and have a wonderful day. Enjoy your fractions and decimals.